Hello and welcome to Accounting Instruction Help and How To. In this lecture series, we're going to take a look at accounting topics, the main accounting topics that are covered in most accounting textbooks. We're going to go through them in a logical fashion, the same fashion or similar fashion that they could be found in many accounting textbooks. We're going to start off with financial accounting, and then we'll see if we can move on to some managerial accounting topics after that at that point. Uh, my name is Bob Steele. I'm, I'm a CPA. I have a Master's of Science in Taxation and a Global Management Accounting designation from the AICPA. I've been working and teaching in accounting for over seven years and working in accounting for a lot longer than that. So I hope this information is useful and helpful to both students as well as uh, anybody that wants to learn accounting for either their business or for um, work within their job or just because they want to learn accounting. <laughs> so we're going to start off here, of course, with the question that I think any lecture series should really start off with, and that's going to be, why learn accounting? What is it? What's the point? Why would we learn accounting? And uh, the objectives of this presentation will be, describe reasons for learning and studying accounting, define business objectives and contrast business objectives with personal objectives, define what accounting is, and list and describe types of organizations. So that first question, why learn accounting? I'm going to say the first thing is, because it's fun. And that's probably not the first thing that popped into most people's minds, but I'm going to, of course, convince everybody of that by the end of this presentation. But I do want to point out that if we're learning accounting, for whatever reason we are learning the accounting, we do want to focus in on something that's going to be more enjoyable within the process of accounting. And in doing so, I would focus in on accounting being something like a game, figuring out a puzzle, figuring out a process. And if we think about it that way, it becomes a lot more enjoyable to do. For example... Uh, accounting is going to be similar in some ways to like figuring out a puzzle or something like that. Uh, I'm going to ask you to visualize a lot of things in this presentation because, of course, we're going to try to think through and visualize what's going on. So if we visualize the puzzle that we're going to put down and it was all in many different pieces, uh, the act of putting the puzzle together and getting that sense of completion and satisfaction once we put the puzzle back together uh, is something that can be enjoyable. And uh, the accounting can be similar in a lot of ways because what we're doing so we're taking numbers. We're going to rearrange the numbers. We're going to put those numbers into a different order. And that order, of course, will be in balance. That will, We've heard that term probably, the things in balance, the balance sheet's in balance. Well, that gives us a similar kind of satisfaction as if we were to put a puzzle together. I, I would compare it sometimes to something like music. If we were going to think about music and we wanted to play music, uh, many things that stop people from playing music is usually the fact that they got to memorize stuff before they can play music, like chords and, and progressions and whatnot. And that type of thing is not fun. you got to memorize those types of things, and you got to memorize this pattern of things before you can be creative within the pattern of things, within the rules of, of the music. And that's usually the thing that stops people. And uh, But once you learn those things, then you can, you can do a lot more with it. We're going to do the same thing with accounting. we got to learn rules. we got to learn uh, definitions of things. we got to see how things fit together. Now, most of the rules are not really complicated in terms of math, particularly in financial accounting. Uh, they are going to be things just, just basically how we're going to move the numbers around. If you are a math person, if you enjoy math a lot, then managerial accounting is an area where we have a lot more complex math that we can apply to making decision making. But financial accounting, making the financial statements, we're going to spend a lot of time with like uh, addition and subtraction, and we're going to throw in a little bit of algebra, but you're really not too difficult of algebra. We do start off with an accounting equation, which is, has three <laughs> three numbers in it. Uh, and then the last thing I'll compare it to is something like a checkers, if we wanted to play checkers. So if you wanted to play checkers, you visualize the checkerboard, and you put the pieces on the checkerboard, and then we move the pieces around. And if we visualize that checkerboard, we, what are we looking at? We're looking at a nice spreadsheet. And of course, uh, we as accountants like the nice spreadsheet. And if we wanted to play checkers, then of course, the first thing we need to do is learn the rules. How do we set the pieces up? How do we move the pieces? If you're playing with someone that doesn't know the rules of checkers, not a very fun game to play. Learning rules, memorization, not a very fun thing to do. But once they're learned, then you can play the game and it can be somewhat more enjoyable. We're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to have to learn the rules. The, learn, the rules we'll first start off learning fairly soon will be similar to a checkerboard. We're going to have a board. I'm going to call it a T account. So if you visualize just a T and the debits are on the left-hand side, credits are on the right-hand side, that's our board. That's what we're going to be working with. We're going to be visualizing T accounts, a T. Other reasons for learning accounting besides the fact that it's fun is that accounting has been described as the language of business. So when we think about accounting, when we present the business information, oftentimes we are asked to have the accounting, for, see the financial statements, to see how the business is doing. So that's true whether we are the business owner or if we work within the business. If we work within a business, even if we're not in the accounting department, 
it's good to have an idea of the accounting because the one of the objectives, one of the major measuring tools for how well a business is doing is revenue generation and the financial statements. So we really want to have a sense of what that measuring tool is, how it works, and that'll help us to basically do a better job within whatever department we are in. So if we're in work in a business in a small business, or if we work in some other department within a business, if we know the accounting, we know how things, how, how things fit together, that can really help us to understand other pieces of the business. Accounting can also help with our personal finances, so we all, all have to invest in some way. We're going to have to invest for retirement and these types of things. Accounting concepts can be very applicable within, when we're thinking about our own finances, our own assets, and our own liabilities and whatnot, so we can apply many of the accounting principles to ourselves as well. Accounting is also a way to make formal decisions. So if we're just working on our critical thinking skills, which is good for anybody, we, we can look at accounting and look at the principles of accounting and see how different problems are approached and how we can logically put together problems, especially for larger decisions, big decision-making issues. Uh, if we think about those through a, a systematic system, a lot of times that's what accounting is. We're gonna try to put things through a systematic system Think through them in such a way that the data is laid out so that we are more likely to make a good decision. So those kind of critical thinking skills are another thing that uh, accounting can really be helpful in. Yeah. So the business objectives. We'll start off with a business objective, and I'm going to say to generate revenue. So the business objective is to generate revenue. Now, a lot of people have a problem when I say that sometimes. People say, you know, my small business or my business, whatever my business is, is not just to generate revenue. I'm trying to help people out. Uh, you know, I have this service, I'm a veterinarian or something like this, and I truly like to help pets, you know, that's why I'm doing it. But uh, I do want to point out, we do want to focus in, of course, on the accounting that the, the, rev the revenue is going to be the major objective. And, if, and of course, if we look at it in terms of how the business is doing, revenue is one measure of how the business is doing. It's not the only measure, but if we did do something like being a veterinarian and we didn't generate revenue, we lost money, we couldn't be a veterinarian. We would we would go out of business, right? So the revenue is going to be one of our major measures as to how good the business is doing, how well they're doing, how well they're being able to provide uh, resources to the community. A, a, a business that's been in the community for a long period of time and is generating revenue, that's a good sign that it's a, that it is providing a lot of value to the community because it's something that has lasted for a long time. So revenue is going to be our major measuring tool. The first thing we want to do when we think about uh, revenue is we want to break out, when we think about the business, we want to break out the business uh, objectives, the business piece of our lives from the personal side of our lives. So uh, if we visualize our lives as like a big circle and that's our entire lives, that everything that we have in there, we have a different objective. We want to separate that objective from the business objective, the smaller circle. Think of a smaller circle inside. That's the business objective. The smaller circle inside, the business objective, we can narrow it down to something like generating revenue. And as opposed to the larger circle on the outside, which is going to be something like, I don't know, that's, that's a question for philosophy, I guess, to live well, to be happy, <laughs> would be the personal objective. If we can break those two things out, it, it's, it's advantageous for both objectives because then we can focus in on how we're doing. It's much easier for us to measure how well we're doing if we narrow down the objective and look at uh, revenue as the objective. That's the major difference that we're going to have between uh, business expenses, business assets, and personal expenses and personal assets. The objective is the thing that differentiates it. So anytime we spend money, anytime we do anything uh, and spend money, we're either buying an asset or we're having an expense. The difference is, the question is, is it a business expense? Is it a personal expense? And uh, it's going to be the objective that will define that. For example, if we obviously if we went to like Disneyland, we would say, huh, that sounds like a personal expense. We didn't do that in order to help us to generate revenue. On the other hand, if we spent money in order to have a delivery service for our business, something that we needed to deliver, then we don't, the only reason we did that is to help us generate revenue. That would be a business expense. So the difference between those two being the objective between the two. Uh, yeah, in terms of an asset, if we bought a building in order to work in that building, then because we haven't consumed it yet and we're going to use it in the future, it's going to help us generate revenue in the future. It's an asset because it's going to help us generate revenue in the future and it ha we haven't consumed it at the point of purchase. So it's a business asset because it's going to help us generate revenue in the future. As opposed to if we bought a home. The home is going to help us to do something in the future, but it's going to have a different objective. The home is to help us live well, to be happy within the future. So those are both assets, 
One's a business asset, one's a personal asset. What's the difference? The difference is the objective, the reason for those two things to happen. So the first thing we want to do is separate the business from the personal. Why? Because it helps us measure things. Now the question always comes up now is like, well, what if I work within my house? You know, now it's a business and personal asset. Or what if I took clients to Disneyland? And for tax purposes, sometimes, you know, these types of questions come up. The idea from a, we can get into those individual topics, but the idea from uh, uh, an accounting standpoint, if we didn't have taxes and stuff kind of muddy in the water is that we want to separate those two as much as possible. We want to separate those two because uh, that will help us to focus in and define what the goals and objectives are on the business side. So we want to have a separate checking account. We want to basically separate the business half from the personal half so it can help us measure in that way. I'm going to give a definition of accounting and then we'll break down that definition a bit. So here's the long definition. Bear with me. Accounting is the accumulation of financial data into relevant form which can be used for practical decision making for both or either internal users or external users. Okay, so let's break that down a bit. Accounting is the accumulation of financial data. So we're going to accumulate data. What's going to be the data? That's going to be all the transactions. We're going to have all the transactions. We're going to accumulate that transactions. We're going to have a pile of transactions. What are we going to do with those transactions? We're going to put them into a relevant form. What's a relevant form? Usually financial statements. So <laughs> we're taking the data. We're making financial statements out of them. Why are we making financial statements out of them? Because we want them to be practical for decision making. We want to put that data into a relevant form so that it's something that can be practical for decision making. Who's making the decisions based on this data that we put in the financial statements? Uh, either internal users or external users. Internal users, the business. Obviously, we want to make decisions based on what we've done. We want to see our track record. We want to make decisions based on that track record. But we also have external users. External users are going to be like uh, investors. If we're, if we're publicly traded, we have uh, investors in the stock market. We also have to have the government. We have to have the tax returns. We're going to have to have tax returns. If we want to get a loan or creditors or something like that, the bank are going to be people that are going to use these financial statements. Okay, so there's two major forms of accounting, two major sections. So when you think about accounting, you want to kind of visualize the two groups of accounting. So we have accounting, and then we have these two groups that are splitting under the accounting. One is going to be the financial accounting. One's going to be the managerial accounting. We're focusing here on the financial accounting. That's usually if you start an accounting program, that's usually where you start on the financial accounting side, then move on the, into managerial. If you're, if you're doing a, a master's program or something like that, that's usually focused more on the managerial side because it's focused on the decision making. The financial side is often focused, generally focused on creation of the financial statements. How is the data compiled? How are the financial statements created? And when we do that, we focus on external users usually. So external users are the ones, that's the creditors, that's the, the uh, customers, that's the government, those are investors. When we think about publicly traded companies, the financial accounting becomes something that's way more regulated. It's, it's much more regulated than the managerial accounting because people outside the company are depending on the data. Especially if we're talking about publicly traded companies that are trading on the stock exchange, we've got people investing their 401k plans in it and whatnot and things like that. And in order for that to happen, those people need to be able to depend on the financial statements. Not only do the financial statements need to be right, but they need to be something that they can compare to other financial statements. I need to compare this company to that company in, in apples to apples, as they say, you know, the same thing to the same thing so that we can make that type of comparison. For that reason, the financial accounting is going to be much more regulation, much more standardized. Now, the standards that are in there, it often gets confusing on why we do things. Obviously, we do things to obey the law and be within the standards. But it's also important to realize that the standards were created by best practices. I mean, the standards usually are taking the best practices, the things that work well in order to give the best picture of the financial statement and formalize them within a regulation. So the regulations aren't just random and we're not, it's not like we're following random rules for no reason. Usually the random rules were based on a reason that reason growing from the accounting side of thing, from the business side of thing, from the best practice side of thing, and then being standardized so that uh, people can depend on the financial statements. On the managerial side of thing, there's no rules really. The, you know, you can do whatever you want because what you're doing is creating internal reports for internal use. Now, that the data that's going to be created to make those internal reports, that's going to come from the same place. I mean, the, the data that we're putting into the system that we made the financial statements from, we're still going to make most of the reports on the on the managerial side with that same data. 
It's just that we might order it differently. We might order it for internal decision making in different ways. Now, you might be thinking, well, if there's no rules and there's no standardization, how do you learn managerial accounting? Every, every company could do it differently. And like I said, just, with the, just as it's true with the financial accounting, when the financial accounting was developed, same thing's true with the managerial accounting, isn't it? There's best practices. There's things that people do that are standardized. The, the, the companies that have done well have done these practices. So it's just like if you thought of sports or something like that and you were thinking about baseball or something and uh, you're, you're teaching someone how to do something, you can say, yeah, you know, you can do whatever you want. The rules don't say that you can't do this a different way, but the people that win do it this way, you know. And so that's what we're going to do here. The managerial accounting is much the same way. We're going to look at decision making. How do we make decisions? And we're going to look at best practices. We're going to say, what have people done that works in the past? And that becomes pretty standardized. So even though it's not formally regulated, you don't have to do these types of things. Uh, the question is, most of the time we want to do those types of things. Those are the types of things that are succeeding. Business entities. We're going to start off going and looking at the sole proprietor first. So we're going to look at transactions for a sole proprietor for a few reasons. One, it's the simplest one to look at. Two, uh, many businesses are sole proprietors. Actually, the majority of businesses are sole proprietors. And three, the transactions are going to be much the same for sole proprietors as other companies. So I want to start looking at those transactions and sole proprietors and then add on to those things and look at the things that will differ from different types of businesses. So once we talk about the transactions from a sole proprietor perspective, we'll move on to like partnerships. And we'll just look at the thing that's different between a partnership and a sole proprietor. What's different between a partnership and a sole proprietor? Well, you have two partners. So that means the equity section is going to be different. So everything else, a lot of the other stuff is the same. When you look at different entities, when you pay the utility bill, you know, when you pay the employees and that kind of stuff, much the same. The transactions are going to be much the same. We're going to have the same data. We're going to have the same financial statements. But, uh, of course, when we think about divvying up things like revenue to the different partners, that's going to differ. And that's what we'll focus. And then we'll move to the corporation. Again, much of the stuff is going to be the same. What's going to differ between the corporation and the partnership and the sole proprietor? The equity section. Who owns the corporation? The, op the corporation is owned by the stockholders. So the, the transactions are going to be much the same as the sole proprietor or partnership. When we pay the delivery bill and we, when we pay the employees and stuff, all that's pretty similar. What's going to differ? The, the stockholders, the dividends that we're going to have in the corporation. We can have bonds. Uh, within a corporation. So those are the things we'll focus on, the things that will differ. So that's going to be it for the first one. So what we have done and what we are now able to do after this presentation is describe reasons for learning and studying accounting, define business objectives and contrast business objectives with personal objectives, define what accounting is, and list types of organizations. Thank you.